In lesson 3.5, students put calcium chloride and baking soda in an indicator solution, and then they put citric acid and baking soda in an indicator solution. And they see two different reactions. And the question is, why do the substances react differently? Students will conclude that since different substances are made up of different molecules, they interact and react chemically in characteristic ways. So first, you would make up enough indicator solution so that all the groups can have enough to do the experiments. The students put an amount of indicator solution in a cup and then they add a thermometer and then they add a combination of citric acid and baking soda and see the reaction. And obviously there's a lot of bubbling and there's a color change and the temperature started at about 20 degrees and now it's down to a little less than 10 degrees Celsius. So they see a color change, a production of a gas, and a change in temperature. And eventually they'll see that the green indicator solution they started with ends up yellow, which shows that it's somewhat acidic. And next, the students use the same amount of indicator solution. They put a thermometer in, and this time they add calcium chloride and baking soda. And here, you can see that the reaction is more gradual. The change in color doesn't go as pink as it did with the citric acid first. And the bubbling, or production of a gas, happens more slowly. As far as temperature change, the initial temperature was about 20 degrees. And here, the final temperature is about 23 to 24. There's a small increase in temperature. When students look at the results side by side, they see that the calcium chloride and baking soda in indicator solution ended up to be uh, like a very light pink and cloudy looking with a slight increase in temperature. And the citric acid and baking soda ended up to be more clear, more yellow, and a decrease in temperature. They see that substances interact and react chemically in characteristic ways. We can take a look at these reactions using an animation. So the animation shows our source cups of citric acid and baking soda and calcium chloride and baking soda. The animation shows two samples of indicator solution with a thermometer in each one that's at about 20 degrees to start. And we're gonna add the citric acid and baking soda to one and the calcium chloride and baking soda to the other. So citric acid and baking soda forms a lot of gas quickly and turns reddish. Eventually we saw that it turned yellowish in the end and we have a temperature decrease down to about 10 degrees. For the calcium chloride in baking soda, it reacted more gradually and it ended up to be sort of a pinkish, more cloudy looking solution. The animation shows a bit more of a temperature increase than we saw. We saw about 24 degrees, it shows up to 30. But in either case, there's a temperature increase as opposed to a decrease with the citric acid. In the extend part of the activity, you can do a demonstration where you have a cup with indicator solution in it, and in it you'll drop an Alka-Seltzer tablet. And you can tell students what's in an Alka-Seltzer tablet and ask them for their prediction of what should happen. An Alka-Seltzer tablet contains citric acid, aspirin, which is also an acid, and it also contains baking soda, sodium bicarbonate. So what you see is immediately you see the acids interacting with the indicator and changing it to red, and now it's starting to be neutralized a bit by the baking soda. So you're getting more, instead of red, you're getting more of a yellow, and over time, this actually turns more toward green and eventually green, the neutral color of the indicator. You can bring up the idea from the last lesson that students did about neutralizing acids where they added base to a solution that already had an acid and an acid to a solution that already had a base and saw that the solution could be neutralized. For the NGSS standards, 5 PS13 make observations and measurements to identify materials based on their properties and 5PS14 conduct an investigation to determine whether the mixing of two or more substances results in new substances. This lesson, lesson 3.5, supports these 
standards because students see that substances react in a characteristic way and that that's actually a property of the substance and that they can identify substances by their characteristic way they react. In the course of the investigation, students mix substances and see that new substances are produced. In both cases, a gas is produced and there's a color change and there's also a change in temperature. If you look at the foundation boxes, science and engineering practices, planning and carrying out investigations, students add the same amount of different substances to the same amount of indicator solution with thermometers in at the same time and they do a controlled test to see their results. And in each case, students see that the colors are different, the speed at which the gas was generated is different, and there's a difference in temperature. And they realize that since the substances are different, that they're made out of different molecules, that's an explanation for why they react differently. For disciplinary core ideas, structure and properties of matter, and chemical reactions, students measure a variety of properties, production of a gas, change in temperature, change in color, and see that they can identify substances based on how they react. They also see that when two or more substances are mixed, new substances are formed. In cross-cutting concepts, cause and effect, students see that the cause of the different reactions is the fact that the substances are different. They're made out of different molecules, and that will cause them to interact differently and result in different changes whether it's production of a gas, change in color, or change in temperature. So thanks for listening and watching, and good luck with the lesson.